So uh, today we will be discussing about uh, concept of disability and disability assessment in psychiatric social work. So uh, it will be a short uh, discussion. Uh, I expect all the participants to actively participate in the discussion so that uh, we can learn things um, in a participatory approach. And uh, in case if you have any doubts, you can uh, raise your hands or you can put it in the chat box so that uh, we can clarify at the end of the uh, discussion. I hope my slides, everyone can, it's visible. Yes, it's visible. Yeah. So uh, in uh, today's discussion, we will be discussing about uh, the basic concept of disability different models of uh, disability in uh, psychiatric uh, practices, uh, some of the legislations related to persons with disabilities and a disability assessment. So uh, if you look at this broader four um, handle uh, headings, it is a wide uh, topic to discuss. So I'll try to concise it in a, uh, 45 minutes of a discussion. So uh, before moving to uh, the presentation, uh, I just want to ask the participants that uh, you will be uh, doing your first year and second year MFL. So how many of you are uh, familiar with disability, uh, the concept of disability or a disability certification process? Maybe we can take a couple of uh, response from the participants. How many of you are familiar with the concept of disability as well as uh, involved in disability uh, assessment and certification process? Anybody? <clears throat> This is just to understand uh, the audience, understanding about uh, the concept of disability and disability assessment process. So there is no right answer, there is no wrong answer. Yes, sir, this is Namrata. Uh, okay. As far as I uh, can um, uh, answer that a disability is any kind of impairment, both uh, somatic and uh, maybe mental. And okay. it may be, um, caused by an impairment okay uh, good Thank evening you, sir yes this is ataula from institute of mental health Rothar. okay uh, so uh, disability is any condition of the mind or body which uh, extent or which impairs the person uh, to certain activity like uh, an interaction with the world around them sir Okay. And uh, we have been uh, uh, participated with, actually we do the uh, disability certification in our OPD with ideas actually, sir. Okay, okay. Yes. Thank you, Adha. So uh, I think it is very important to understand the concept of disability because as a psychiatric social workers, uh, we will be engaged in a lot of activities and care planning which related to uh, disability and uh, management strategies. So if you look at uh, different definitions, I have given uh, United Nations Convention of Rights of Persons with Disabilities uh, definition, WHO's definition, and RPWD uh, 2016 definition about disability. So I have highlighted here in uh, red mark where uh, you can see that uh, in all the definitions, it was clearly mentioned that disability is not just a single factor. It has multiple uh, factors which is interrelated, which could be a person, um, somebody has mentioned about environment, then uh, some of the uh, individual factors, some of the social factors, some of the environmental factors, as well as some of the attitudinal factors. So these factors interact with each other and that can be prevented a person with that particular condition to uh, effectively participates in various social and other activities in the society. So if you look across all this definition, it has tried to convey the same similar kind of uh, meaning where uh, disability is not just because of a single factor. It is basically an interaction about multi factors, which include individual factors, social factors, environmental factors, which sometimes uh, facilitate the functioning or which sometimes restrict an individual with disabilities in terms of uh, fully participating in social activities. 
So, uh, if you look at the co uh, conceptual models of disability, because when we practice uh, in this particular area, there are different models over a period of time come up. The, so, the initial model in 1940s or 1950s were the medical model, where this particular philosophy clearly says that disability is nothing but a medical uh, coming out of a medical condition. So, in case if you try to treat that particular medical condition, the person's disability might vanish. So, you have to focus on the medical condition, you have to try to treat that particular condition, and then the person will not have any forms of disability. That is one of the first model uh, earlier we were practicing. Then it has come, uh, social model has come, where in social model it clearly says that disability is uh, the result of various disadvantaged social policies and because of social causes. So, uh, it is the responsibility of government or the other uh, state to, uh, to implement various uh, strategies or intervention to manage those disabilities. So, so, in social model, basically they say that disability is secondary to uh, various limitation, social policies and welfare benefits. Then, uh, the current model which has come, which is biopsychosocial model, which is basically based on the international classification of functioning. So, in biopsychosocial model, it clearly says that disability is not because of just because of medical condition or not just because of social factors. It is multifactorial thing and it, which interact each other. For example, um, the individual factors such as age, gender, or um, education, or other social demographic factors might affect disability. Family factors, which include the family support, the number of family members available, or family uh, 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 other uh, dynamics or other factors, uh, or social position of that particular family in that society. All those things also interact with the disability, as well as the environmental factors. Environmental factors could be uh, a lot of uh, social policies, or the, the structure of various things. For example, uh, imagine a person with physical disability. He does not have a disability friendly uh, building uh, wherever he is going for work. He might have challenges in terms of uh, his functioning. So basically in biopsychosocial model, we are looking at various factors which is interacted with each other and that results uh, in terms of disability to that particular person. So, uh, here many of you discussed about uh, different terms such as impairment, some of them discussed about disability, some of them were discussed about handicap. So, so when you're working in this particular area, you have to clearly understand what is the difference between all these three terms. So, um, while looking at uh, disability, you have to look at three important terms. The first one is impairment, second one is disability, and third one is handicap. So, uh, in terms of impairment, if you look at the definition, impairment is nothing but a loss or abnorm abnormality of psychological, physiological, or anatomical structure or function. Basically, imagine a person with visual disability. His impairment is difficulty in uh, uh, vision. That is his uh, impairment. Uh, a person with uh, physical uh, disability where loss of his limbs, loss of, loss of his legs, or loss of his hands would be uh, is impairment. So uh, this is nothing but a loss of loss or abnormality in various uh, part of the body or structure of the uh, body. So in that scenario, what would be the impairment for uh, mental illness? With this definition, what would be the impairment of uh, mental illness? Anybody, any guess? Uh, abnormalities in the thoughts or cognition or good uh, yeah cognitive deficits uh, would be an impairment uh, if, when we are working with person with mental illness neurochemical imbalance could be an impairment uh, for person with mental illness so you need to understand uh, based on each disability the impairment the loss of uh, or abnormality in body uh, structure or tissue might differ so in each disability that is different. So you need to understand in that. So uh, the next concept is disability. So disability is nothing but because of the impairment or loss of uh, body part or tissue, the person is restricted in terms of doing his activities of daily living, which is uh, which a normal person is supposed to do. For example, any restrictions or lack uh, of ability to perform activities of daily living. Imagine. Uh, somebody who is having physical disability, uh, 
uh, a person who lost both his limbs, he may not be able to walk independently without any support. He might require a wheelchair or other uh, kind of support where he is not able to access certain uh, uh, things at home or he is not able to uh, go and take bath independently. He might require some sort of support. So that particular condition calls as disability. The third concept is handicap. Uh, handicap is you have to look into a larger social perspective, uh, which is nothing but it is a disadvantage of for a given individual because of impairment and disability. Uh, imagine a person is uh, because of uh, impairment or disability, the person is not able to uh, perform his social activities or social uh, related um, engagement. For example, um, uh, the similar example where a person with physical disability is he, he, he lost his both the limbs and hands, where he, he may not be able to uh, attend a social function like any other person. He might be uh, this condition might limits or prevents him to uh, actively participate in social activities or in terms of his employment, he may not be able to uh, participate. So, so you need to understand the difference between impairment disability and handicap uh, clearly so that you will have a good understanding about uh, while working with persons with disability. So in ICF, it has clearly defines how various factors interact uh, 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 and uh, uh, contribute for persons disability. So if you look at that, any health condition or disorder, imagine a, a person with physical disability. His body functions and stretches, uh, the impairment is his body functions and stretches. It could be uh, loss of his legs, loss of his hands, or, or loss of his, any of his body parts. So that particular thing is called as impairment. Then limitation in his activities, which include uh, his mobility might, might have affected. He may not be able to access uh, a lot of uh, uh, things at home uh, because of this physical uh, impairment. So that is uh, uh, second as uh, disability. And participation in social activities considered as a uh, handicap condition. But if you are looking at these particular concepts in a con contextual factors, you also have to look at various other factors which might facilitate or which might uh, be a barrier for this particular condition, which could be an environmental factors. Environmental factors could be not, uh, uh, for example, uh, not having adequate facilities at home uh, to uh, move the wheelchair. Uh, there might be barriers uh, across the door uh, because the structure of the houses might be a little outdated. So that can be an environmental barriers. Or other things could be uh, not having any uh, facilities or that sort of thing. And personal factors, it could be other medical conditions or age of that person, gender of that person. If you look at a lot of uh, disabilities in a social context, uh, a lot of disabilities, uh, uh, gender uh, makes a clear differences in terms of discrimination and other things. Uh, if you look at a lot of literature related to mental health conditions, women with mental health conditions in rural communities faces a lot of challenges because of the attitudinal uh, uh, factors. So you need to understand in that particular. So here I have given a few examples uh, to make you understand in a better way. Uh, I have given different uh, conditions to discuss about impairment, uh, disability, and uh, handicap. So if you look at the first condition, leprosy, the impairment is loss of sensation of extremities. The activity limitation is difficulty in grasping objects. The person with leprosy might be having difficulty in fine motor skills. Then participation, participation restrictions could be stigma of lep leprosy leads to unemployment. Uh, we know that a per, uh, how much a person with these kind of conditions are well accepted in our social system. There are a lot of stigma associated with this uh, condition. If you look at the similar condition like a TB, uh, the lot of time stigma actually prevents them in terms of social participation or employment. And second thing is panic disorder. The impairment thing is anxiety or uh, the thought or emotions related to that. Um, the activity limitation could be not cap capable of going out because of this uh, anxiety. It could be a social anxiety or a specific anxiety. Then people's reaction lead to uh, no social relationship. For example, when somebody is having social anxiety, his peer group might be criticizing him uh, uh, just because they are not aware about this particular condition. That can lead to a limitation in social uh, activities. In terms of spinal injury, because we, we come across a lot of uh, neurological condition, uh, in spinal injuries, paralysis uh, could be an impairment. Activity limitation could be inca incapable of using public transportation or other thing. 
participation restriction could be lack of accommodations in public trans transportation lead to low participation in various activities. So the last example I have given a person treated for a psychiatric uh, psychotic disorder. So here I have kept impairment none, activity limitation none, but participation restriction that is handicap uh, condition where it says that denied employment because of employer's prejudice. Uh, is it possible? Is it possible to have uh, the situation limitation in participation restriction without impairment or activity limitation? Is it possible? Anybody? Without impairment or without disability, whether a person can have a participation restriction in, in, in terms of uh, some of the disabilities? Is it possible? Any, any, any guess? Anybody? Did you understand the difference between impairment, disability, and handicap? All of you? So there's a message. Yes, I think it can be happened. Okay. So I'm not able to see the by Adira KV Nimhans. Okay. So Adira, um, uh, could you give an example uh, 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 with this particular condition, like a person treated for a, a psychotic disorder, whether it's possible to have without impairment or disability, a person can have participation restriction. Can you just guess and tell us that uh, how, how, how does it uh, possible? Uh, yes, sir. I think uh, it is possible because of the stigma persisting in the society or because of the like, uh, even though if it is not the person with mental illness, if uh, the caregivers, one person, uh, people understand that the, there is one caregiver who is in a house, one person have mental illness, they are, they are excluding from certain uh, community participation or certain activities. So that also can be result in participating restriction. So it's not necessarily there should be a, like a environment or activity limitation that can be led to participation restriction, I think. Yes. So uh, with this example itself, imagine a person uh, with psychotic condition, its impairment could be neurochemical imbalances uh, through the treatment uh, or, or when, when he's having that particular neurochemical imbalance, he may not be able to participate uh, or perform his ADL or IADL activities that might have affected uh, because of this particular condition. And then the person has been brought to the uh, psychiatric uh, treatment or uh, psychosocial intervention. Uh, the treating team would have been given medication and other psychosocial intervention. The uh, neurochemical imbalances could be managed with medications. Gradually, uh, after managing the neurochemical imbalances, the person's functionality also might improve. You, you might have seen a lot of uh, patients who uh, comes with acute um, symptoms or acute mental health conditions. Uh, the treating team would be uh, providing a lot of interventions to them and you will uh, discharge that person uh, when the person is able to perform uh, all the activities uh, which he was doing earlier but still the when the person goes back uh, the, uh, the, there will be a lot of stigma related to that particular condition the lot of attitudinal uh, issues related to that particular particular condition that might restrict a person's in terms of uh, participating in various social activities. It could be discrimination from the employment, it could be discrimination in social uh, activities, or it could be dis discrimination in terms of various public activities. So here, um, as a scholars, uh, I would recommend you to read some of the uh, work which has done by Saumitra Patare, Dr. Saumitra Patare and team uh, on various mental health conditions and uh, how much all these conditions restrict a person's in terms of social activities. So they have done based on a legal perspective where how much all these uh, mental health care act or mental health legislations helps a person's in terms of social participation or restrictions, which could be um, uh, uh, the person's right to vote, political rights or participatory rights or other legal rights, how much a person without having impairment or activity limitation, which restrict a person's in terms of social participation. So it would be, a, 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 his work would be a good example uh, for understanding this particular aspect. 
So uh, I have given a couple of examples for the uh, better understanding. So imagine a person with spinal cord injury. His impairment would be problems of muscles and structures of uh, spinal cord. His disability is a difficulty in moving and walking around. And uh, uh, handicap would be participation in employment or sports. That would be the social uh, restrictiveness. Uh, various contextual factors also place uh, a disability for this particular person, which could be the educational system. Um, there may not be any uh, open education system for uh, available in that particular uh, state or uh, country. Uh, limited technological intervention or adequate technological intervention. If you look at a lot of European countries where they provide technological advances to uh, overcome these kind of uh, difficulties, uh, family members might be uh, uh, as a supporter. Uh, if they are supportive, then it will be a facilitator or otherwise a lack of social support can be a barrier. In terms of uh, individual factors, it could be a gender, it could be an age of that particular person. Imagine somebody with 60 years of age uh, having a spinal cord injury uh, can have a lot of other medical comorbidities because of his age, then uh, having an adequate support uh, in the family. So these are the various contextual factors which can facilitate or uh, restrict uh, an individual in various levels of activities. In terms of mental health condition, the problem with the neurochemical imbalance or social and neurocognition deficits could be an impairment. Difficulty in performing uh, activities of daily living or instrumental activities of daily living could be a uh, disability condition. A restricted social uh, relationship could be a uh, social uh, participation restriction. And the contextual factors, if you look at negative attitude, express emotion from the family, lack of support system and uh, barriers in terms of lack of access to mental health care facilities or um, any other uh, difficulties in terms of getting a proper uh, treatment. And in terms of individual factors, which could be uh, gender, age, or uh, some of these factors can uh, contribute. So uh, in the next section, uh, we will move to the some of the legislation related to persons with disability. As a social worker, it is important, no, important to know the international uh, legislations which are related to uh, persons with disabilities, as well as uh, Indian uh, specific uh, legislations, which would include RPWD uh, 2016, Rights of Person with the Disabilities Act, and um, uh, National Trust Act, and other Mental Health Care uh, Act of 2017, and some of the articles, which is like Article 24 or 25, which is related to uh, ensuring some of the fundamental rights. So in this uh, particular uh, session, I'll be discussing only the main points of RPWD and how these some of the provisions will aid us uh, in terms of uh, helping the persons with disability and certification process. So before starting that session, I thought I'll just have a brainstorming, uh, brainstorming time where uh, uh, we will have at least two minutes or three minutes of discussion. Um, so what do you think, what is the purpose of a disability assessment and uh, the role of assessment in PSW interventions? What do you think, why do we need to do the disability assessment at all? As a social worker, you'll be working with your patients. So why do you think disability assessment is important and how much it is helping us in terms of providing the uh, psychosocial interventions? Anybody? Sir, um, this is Suvina. Okay, okay, Suvina, yeah. Um, so, uh, so we, for UDID card, basically we do the uh, disability assessment to get the benefits from uh, the government. Okay, good point. So one is to get the welfare benefits uh, and social security benefits for uh, persons with the disability, which is provided by various central and state governments. Yes, uh, a good point. Anything else? Sir, we do... Uh, disability assessment just to know what extent uh, the individual has in, uh, disability and what kind of intervention he or she needs yes very good point so uh, when you are when you are assessing the disability you will get to know the uh, the functionality level of the level of disability what is the extent of a disability to that particular person the functionality of that particular uh, person and what is the different level of functionality which the uh, person has uh, with that particular uh, condition and what sort of intervention we need to provide to that particular person. 
Uh, imagine a person um, who has untreated for nine years, a person with schizophrenia who has been untreated for nine years. Suddenly, the uh, family members are bringing him for the intervention. The acute symptoms were managed by the team. Then they are referring to uh, psychosocial intervention or rehabilitation services. So we do a disability assessment to understand his level of functioning, uh, what is his level of functioning in terms of uh, activities of daily living where whether the person is able to take care of his personal hygiene, whether the person is able to perform some of the activities which uh, he is expected to do at a uh, normal uh, situation, and um, what skill that person has, what are the skill deficits that person has, and how, what, what could be the short-term rehabilitation plan as an immediate rehabilitation plan, what we need to do. It could be uh, structuring his day, it could be behavioral activation, it could be uh, providing an activity scheduling uh, per se, or it could be um, having a structure throughout a day. Then what would be the next step? Uh, it could be a specific intervention. For example, some of them, they'll have uh, the basic uh, skills or they'll have mild disability for them. We don't have to start from the scratch uh, where we are providing some of the basic uh, intervention. We can start with uh, specific needs. It could be a supported employment approach or it could be a supported education approach or it could be a community-based uh, intervention. So, so providing intervention, uh, we need to have the person's level of disability as well as uh, the level of functionality. So we have discussed that disability, disability assessment uh, help the person to have welfare benefits. Then to design psychosocial interventions, which is specific or uh, general intervention. Anything there else? A, there is a one message in the chat box to know physical and mental limitation of an individual. By <clears throat> Shailendra Chaudhary. Yes. So, yes, as, as we already mentioned, a disability for various disability welfare benefits, which would be disability pension, uh, which could be a reservation for various education or employment or uh, a reservation for various um, social security welfare schemes, pension transfer, income tax reduction, uh, and all those uh, kind of railway concession, uh, traveling concession, or that sort of thing. Uh, that is for welfare benefits. And we do use a lot of uh, tools that will I'll, I'll be discussing uh, later point of the time. Anything else? Even somebody has mentioned about UDID, uh, Unique Disability Ident uh, Identity Card and uh, its uh, role. Anything else apart from welfare benefits and uh, psychosocial interventions in policy level? So basically, uh, one of the purpose of disability certification is having a uh, statistical data that how many of how many of uh, uh, citizens are having this particular condition on what capacity, what level the persons are, uh, what sort of disability uh, uh, for having uh, for various individuals and what is the level of disability and based on that, how much um, health allocation funds has to be allocated for persons with disabilities. Uh, we might know that a lot of time uh, government uh, would allocate uh, or provide fund to the state government uh, to provide various interventions for uh, persons with disability. How many of you know that every panchayat has has to allocate three percent of their budget to his disability? So, so in the in the panchayat raj, there is there is a clear provision that every panchayat has to be allocated three percent of their uh, budget for various activities uh, for persons with disability. So uh, a disability assessment would provide a national uh, based data uh, for the policy makers and uh, providers so that uh, it will help them to uh, implement various or uh, plan various interventions and strategies to manage disability condition. Okay, so how to assess disability? Somebody has mentioned about ideas and somebody has mentioned uh, ideas, disability assessment scale uh, and various scales. So anybody has uh, performed idea scale for any of your patients in your clinical activities? Anybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So how easy or how difficult it was and how did you uh, do the assessment? Um, so sometimes it is difficult because uh, it 
might be like ki uh, the patient uh, doing to just to uh, actually for getting the benefit just and okay. it is quite easy like if the uh, illness is in chronic and very long uh, then then we can uh, easily assess the things but when uh, the patient uh, means uh, not very talkative not very cooperative then it becomes very difficult to assess the uh, things on ideas because we have to like uh, uh, based okay. on the information which was given by the uh, actually uh, informants okay so um, when do we have to do a, a disability assessment anybody else when do we have to do a disability assessment during the time of admission during the time of discharge during the time of follow up when do we how long we have to wait to do a disability assessment in terms of mental illness i think we have around 51 participants anybody uh, yes sonali from uh, mhi katak yes sonali so uh, sir so, uh, what i think disability assessment should be done in between the course of time when the patient is admitted and we have observed some behavioral and cognitive impairment in him or her and uh, we are like the live evidence that the patient is not being able to do his daily life activities or Uh, okay. or any physical or you know cognitive uh, cognition is impaired so in in this time we get a uh, you know duration short duration that uh, in uh, our daily do, daily ipd days we are looking at the patient we are observing we are doing other assessment and in between we are getting the ideas of uh, the idea that uh, he or she is actually incapable of doing things so i think the, uh, when we are planning for discharge and in pre uh, discharge uh, therapies and counseling we may conduct a assessment and then uh, before discharge we can uh, uh, like uh, Uh, tell them that these these are the benefits you are going to get and okay. so on any any different opinion any different suggestions when when can we do a disability assessment sir um, so uh, manjusha here from yes, from hands sir uh, when patient comes uh, for a follow up uh, so that time uh, it will be ideal to assess how much it has impacted him and with the help of the informants uh, like what uh, he or she is telling we can make a better conclusion okay the so why the... uh, manjusha why do you think that uh, it has to be assessed during the time of follow up when they are coming for follow up uh, during the admission uh, like most of the symptoms will be like in their uh, uh, like flower means Uh, it will be flourished that time so how much it has impacted their uh, uh, domains of uh, functionality including the self care or interpersonal activities or all these things we can better assess uh, after their uh, when they are not recovered but uh, in that process okay so uh, basically um, this is something which as a social worker because uh, we are working uh, with policy makers we are working with uh, uh, patients and caregivers for their welfare so we need to have very clear cut ideas about uh, how to uh, perform the disability assessment when to do a disability assessment how to do a disability assessment so uh, some of them said that uh, uh, it can be performed uh, during the time of discharge some of them said that it can be performed during the time of uh, follow up so uh, a disability assessment can be performed at any point of time to check the level of functionality and uh, the improvement in terms of symptoms for the certification purpose uh, the disability certification uh, when we are doing a disability assessment for the certification purpose it the laws the central law or or state laws are not clearly defined when do we have to do a disability certification uh, It, it 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 we might think that it cannot do uh, do the time of acute symptoms some of some of us will uh, feel that it has to be done during the follow up ideally as per the rules does not been mentioned when uh, 
we have to do the disability certification process. So basically what we believe is it is the disciplinary power of the clinician. For example, a clinician can take a call that when uh, we can do a, a disability certification. However, if the patient is requested for a disability certification, we do not have a right to deny that we may not be able to do this disability certification. So it is very clearly that as per the laws, it has not clearly defined. It has defined which scale has to be used, what are the domains of that particular scale and what are the conditions can be assessed. But it has not been mentioned when we have to perform that particular disability. And, and one of the limitation of the uh, particular rules is uh, that where it doesn't say that uh, you have to assess the disability of a person at this current situation, or you have to, you can also consider the past, uh, um, maybe uh, one year ago, how, how the person was. So it has not been mentioned anything. So, so we have to take in that way uh, that uh, it is actu actually a discretionary power of the clinician and the team. Uh, but that is the ideal condition, but as we know that uh, a lot of people prefer to do a disability assessment during the time of follow-up. A lot of them are not comfortable of doing disability assessment during the time of admission or acute symptoms. So, but at the same time, we need to understand that this is what the rules and regulations say. So, there are different uh, scales and uh, methods I have mentioned by RPWD Act. So, um, if you look at RPWD, it is basically United Nations uh, Convention of Rights of Person with Disabilities uh, Act of 2006. Based on that, India also ratified that particular act and uh, we have modified uh, our disability rules and regulation. And India is one of the first country which has made changes according to UNCRDP. Uh, so, it has given uh, different principles for, uh, for uh, disability, uh, ensuring the disability rights of person. I am not going to uh, that uh, detail to that. As per um, RPWD, there are 20 conditions they have mentioned, plus one as multiple disability. So, uh, they have mentioned 20 different uh, conditions which can be included uh, in uh, under disability. And 21st condition is multiple disability. When the person is having uh, mental illness and other condition of physical disability and visual disability, then uh, the person can have the 21st condition that is uh, multiple uh, disability. So um, under the mental health spectrum, we have uh, mental, mental illness, mental retardation that is called as intellectual developmental uh, disorders, autism, then uh, specific uh, learning disability. All these conditions comes under the mental health uh, spectrum. So, before moving to the uh, legislation part, I would like to uh, mention some of the uh, various uh, definitions or uh, uh, things which can be used or which might be useful uh, in terms of providing the disability welfare benefits. So, RPWD clearly says that who, who is a person with benchmark disability, uh, a person with 40% of minimum of 40% uh, of disability can be considered as a person with benchmark disability. It has mentioned about various types of environmental, uh, physical, communicational, or cultural barriers. What is barriers and what are the different types of barriers? Then it has mentioned about inclusive education, where it clearly says that a person with a disability should be getting education along with other students. So every education institution should be an inclusive education institution. There should not be any discrimination uh, for the persons with uh, disability and this is one of the other important things which is high support uh, which uh, in simple way it says that in case if a person with disabilities required intensive support in terms of physical psychological or other ways an appropriate state or central government has to be provided high support needs so this is what called as high support um, for example in karnataka we have something called caregivers allowance as a high support need uh, or um, uh, something like uh, providing dis um, access or provide providing various uh, dis disability uh, aid, uh, which could be a walking stick or which could be other uh, earring uh, aid or other kind of things uh, as also considered as a high support uh, thing or based on the high support thing. Then there is something called reasonable accommodation, uh, which says that when a person with a disability require an appropriate modification in terms of um, uh, physical, psychological, or environmental aspect, which is causing a burden to that uh, particular person, the appropriate authority should make 
or provide a reasonable accommodation to the particular person. So this is something which is very important and we need to understand very clearly according to each disability, this uh, particular provision might differ. For example, a person with specific learning disability where his reasonable accommodation could, could be providing a scribe uh, in case if the person is having difficulty in writing, providing a scribe uh, which can be a support to that particular person or providing an extra time. For example, um, as per the rules, every one hour, 20 minutes extra time or uh, exempting from that particular subject. We get a lot of uh, children with uh, specific learning disability in max, where you can, uh, after the disability certification process, based on the reasonable accommodation, accommodation, we can request the education board to exempt that child from that particular subject. In terms of uh, mental illness, uh, it could be a frequent break. It could be uh, modification uh, in terms of uh, having a single supervisor for that particular person when the person is having difficulty in uh, following multiple commands or it could be providing a, a paid unpaid leave for example a person might have to come for the uh, follow-up or treatment purpose where based on the reasonable, reasonable accommodation we can uh, the company can provide unpaid leave to that particular person so you need to understand while working with the dis different disabilities what is this particular reasonable, reasonable accommodation and how to customize that particular provision for based on the disability and based on the requirement. If it is for a person with physical disability, it could be physical modification. Uh, we had a patient with uh, physical disability uh, with mental health condition. She was a bank manager. She, she required a wheelchair uh, to access the uh, center where uh, she has been transferred to a, a particular center in Bangalore where there is no ramp or there is no uh, lift. So we have requested uh, the, the bank people to make modifications based on the uh, particular reasonable accommodation provision. Bank has made that provision and they have changed manager's room from, uh, from the last room to the first room so that she'll be able to access that room without any difficulty. So these are the, some of the reasonable accommodation based on the disabilities. So now uh, we will move on to the uh, disability assessment based on each condition. As we know that disability certification process is uh, uh, doing currently doing based on the UDID uh, uh, method, where uh, the person has to go to their respective district or taluk hospital, wherever the medical board uh, is available, and uh, it has to be uh, uploaded, applied in, through online, and they will get an appointment date and time uh, through their registered uh, mobile number and uh, they have to uh, go and apply to the, uh, the disability assessment and uh, process. So uh, currently uh, there is a unique card they will get. So uh, that particular card can be used for any uh, welfare benefits except railway concession form because railway has a separate thing. They still uh, has not merged with uh, the current UDID thing. So uh, for railway concession, they have to uh, have a different uh, thing. Other than that, the unique number and unique card can be used for any disability welfare benefits. So we will move on to the uh, uh, each condition. Um, broadly, I would be discussing about how to assess mental illness, mental retardation, and specific learning disability because we have limitation of uh, time. So uh, when you are assessing uh, mental illness, uh, the clinical assessment will be carried out based on the Indian Disability Evaluation uh, Scale ideas. And uh, as per the guidelines, we also need to check any forms of intellectual uh, developmental disability. So we may have, to, in, in case we suspect that a person with mental illness uh, are having a borderline IQ or having some forms of difficulty, we may have to refer the person for IQ assessment. So uh, the IQ assessment also has to be done in that particular case. So we are basically using ideas in the disability evaluation and assessment scale for the uh, assessment of mental illness. So uh, how many conditions we can uh, do this, uh, perform these ideas? What are the conditions we can uh, give disability certificate in terms of mental illness? Quickly. Yeah, people can use the chat box, the chat box if you want to put in yeah. the information. How many conditions we can use ideas uh, for the disability uh, certification process? What are the conditions we can do ideas? Anybody? We all are working with uh, people with mental illness in, in our clinical postings. Okay, psychotic disorder, anything else? Schizophrenia and bipolar, anything else? 
Okay. So, um, IDD. See, sorry? Patients with IDD. Okay. So, uh, ideas, uh, when initially uh, the Indian Psychiatric Association and uh, uh, other uh, organizations, when they developed ideas in 2001 and tested in 2002, it has basically developed for uh, four conditions like uh, schizophrenia, bipolar, dementia, and uh, OCD. But based on the definition of uh, mental illness, any conditions, uh, people with any condition or person with schizophrenia, person with bipolar, person with anxiety, person with phobia, any condition, the persons are entitled to have a disability certification. In case if a person with anxiety comes and asks you for a disability assessment, you do not have a right to deny his rights. We have to do a disability assessment. Whether the person comes under 40% uh, of benchmark disability or not is uh, depends upon the condition and assessment. But anybody with this particular definition are supposed to be assessed for their mental uh, disability uh, condition. And here in my personal experience, I have also um, done disability certification process for persons with uh, substance use disorder also. It's one of the controversial, uh, debatable uh, uh, condition, but I have personally go through uh, disability certification process for persons with substance use disorder also. Uh, we, I know that people will advocate that it's a behavioral condition or it's a biological condition, but um, uh, that is also possible based on the uh, current definition of mental illness. So ideas as uh, the scoring pattern of ideas is zero is no disability, one is mild disability, two is moderate disability, three is severe disability, and four is profound. And uh, this uh, thing uh, along with that, we'll also add the way, uh, duration of illness. So duration of illness is zero to uh, two years, it is one, uh, two to five years, it is two, six to 10 years, it is three, and above 10 years, it is uh, the person will get uh, score four. So here there is a, there is a technical uh, issue uh, in terms of calculating the duration of Ill illness. Imagine somebody is having, uh, somebody is having bipolar affective disorder and you are having a person with schizophrenia. So a person with bipolar affective disorder, he might be have uh, more than 10 years of uh, duration of illness, but he had three episodes where one episode was uh, depression for one month, second episode was uh, a mania for two months, third episode again mania for three months. But total duration of illness is uh, for more than 10 years. And at the same time, you have someone uh, uh, with schizophrenia of uh, maybe with one and a half years of duration of illness. So who, whom do you think uh, will get a more uh, score in terms of duration of illness? Who will get more score? So what we do in our setting is ki we do not consider episodic in like one month or three months or four months. We consider it BPAD if he is having the symptoms or is he first episode uh, in last 10 years, uh, before 10 years, then we consider BPAD also in 10 years and schizophrenia if it is continuous or not. Both we do the same, sir. Okay, so, who will, so based on this, who will get more score? A person with 10 years of duration of bipolar with three episodes or a person with one and a half years of continuous of uh, schizophrenia? Uh, uh, we give the same marks. <laughs> No, if, as, if, as, per, as per the definition, more than 10 years, they'll get uh, score four. four. Yes, sir. So, um, based on this, uh, 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 the person with schizophrenia might get uh, two, uh, one, and the other person will get four. But but if you look at the functionality of the person, uh, the, the theories or uh, scientific uh, findings say that a person with bipolar affective disorder with uh, proper care and treatment, uh, the intermittent recovery and functionality can be 90 or 100 percent. So what we need to understand is it is not, uh, you know, checking the when the person has been diagnosed with this condition. It is ideally it is among the last 10 years, how long the person was ill. It is not about when the person was diagnosed and whether he had three brief episodes, but more than 10 years of duration of illness, he will get four. It is not like that. Among the last 10 years, how long the person was ill? The, the first episode for one month, second episode for three months, third episode for one month. So at the, four months he was on ill and 
you can also add some of the side effect which is related to medication so it is not just roughly you are looking when the person has when you open the file you you see that he has been diagnosed in 2002 and now 2022 so 20 years so you will get score uh, score 4 it has to be ideal it has to be uh, the total uh, number of years or months a person was ill not just in other ways so be clear about that particular thing so uh, the person of disability uh, less than 40 it is mild disability 40 to 70 is moderate 71 to 99 is severe disability and 100 percent is which is profound so in rpwd there is something called borderline disability when you are assessing a disability certificate when a person is not uh, getting a cut of 40 but he is getting uh, somewhere between 25 to 39 then we can consider him as a borderline person with borderline disability not borderline iq borderline disability where he may not be getting any kind of disability welfare benefits but we can certify him saying that he is having borderline level of disability and the person is having between 25 to 39 when we are calculating multiple disabilities this particular score might help the person to have uh, to get a borderline uh, sorry benchmark disability sometimes so next we will move on to the intellectual uh, developmental disability so uh, when we have a person with intellectual development disability first the pediatrician has to be screened for various comorbidities which include hearing vision locomotor impairment or uh, any forms of epilepsy then child and clinical psychologist uh, has to be assessing uh, their adaptive as well as iq uh, testing so uh, we basically use uh, three uh, one scale for checking the adaptive functioning and other two uh, tests for ass uh, assessing the iq functioning for uh, adaptive functioning we use this mainland social maturity scale iq assessment we are using uh, binet gamma test and uh, MISIC. Commonly in everywhere, uh, they use both BSMS and BKD uh, to check the level of uh, IQ or level of uh, disability to that particular person. So uh, disability calculation based on the BSMS uh, score uh, I have given here. Uh, there is uh, a cutoff and other things. I'm not going in detail of each thing. So age of certification, minimum age of certification is one year. So any child less than five years, we will not diagnose that child is having IDD. So we will provide them uh, by saying that global developmental delay with a temporary certificate. And above five years, diagnosis and certification uh, we will be giving. And validity of the certificate, uh, less than five years or three years, what are the earlier, we will be providing a temporary certificate. Uh, and above the five years, the certificate will mention a renewal age. And every child with uh, IDD, they have to renew their certification at the age of 5, at the age of 10. After 18, the certificate uh, will be uh, permanently valid. So you need to be very clear, you, when you are working with uh, families and uh, children, you have to uh, inform this information that when they have to uh, go for the certificate, uh, when, and all, when and all they have to go for renovation of this particular certificate and how they have to go. So this is something which you need to uh, mention. So here in mental health condition, the medical board should be a, a set of few people, which include a psychiatrist, which include a general physician um, and a, a head of the institute or representative of the head of the institute. So these are the uh, basic uh, board members required for certification of mental illness. In terms of mental retardation or intellectual development disorders, it has to be a clinical psychologist or a rehabilitation psychologist and pediatric neurologist, general physician, and it could be a special educator or vocational instructor who is available in that particular setter, as well as head of the institute or representative of the head of the institute has to be there in that board for the disability certification and uh, further process. And in terms of specific learning disability, the rules clearly says that uh, as we know that we get a lot of children uh, with specific learning disability during the time of 10th standard. Until then, our education system passes everyone uh, till 10th. In 10th standard, every school finds that their result has to become uh, in a good margin. So they will identify some form of difficulties uh, with the different children in terms of some of the subject. It could be maths or other thing. Then they will think that this child is having some form of difficulty. So a lot of time we get uh, uh, children uh, who is doing their 10th uh, for the SLD assessment. So as per the new rules, as per the RPWD, it clearly says that teachers of the public and private school uh, in class 
third or eight years, whichever is earlier, uh, they have to be trained adequately to identify and, and, and understand uh, any form of specific learning disability. And there should be a committee at every school where principal will be the chairperson for the committee. And in case if a teacher identify that this child is having a specific learning disability, maybe uh, he might have a difficulty in maths, then they have to uh, sit with the child, understand that how much uh, is having difficulty. Then uh, they have to sit with their parents to understand how much stimulation they are giving to this child at home. If they are actively engaged with the child, then we have to suspect that uh, even though the child is getting adequate stimulation, the child is still having difficulty. So we have to, we may have to suspect for any form of specific learning disability. In terms of if child is not uh, uh, getting adequate stimulation or training at home, we may have to sit with family and provide intervention for them and see that after the uh, adequate training, is there any changes in terms of learning? So in case if uh, at school, uh, if they identify that child is having a difficulty, they have to refer the child to the uh, specialist. So uh, the first uh, person who is who will examine the child would be neurological uh, examination by a pediatrician. We sometimes what happens is if in case if child is having some form of uh, difficulty in reading or hearing or other forms of abnorm structural abnormalities, then they have to rule out that particular thing. Then uh, the child uh, psychiatrist, uh, psychologist or rehabilitation psychologist has to do a, a, a IQ assessment then SLD assessment based on the demands uh, battery. So this is the uh, certification process and minimum age for certification for SLD is eight or uh, third standard and repeat certification at the age of 14 and at the age of 18 years. And this, if once the certificate issued after 18 years, it is considered as a permanent uh, certificate. So uh, the medical board, as I already mentioned for IDD, in the medical world, compulsory, there should be a rehabilitation, rehabilitation or clinical psychologist. There should be a pediatric neurologist. There should be the head of the institute or he can represent, he can nominate some of his representatives. And uh, if available, occupational uh, or vocational teachers or special educators can be included in the team. So uh, the fourth condition is multiple disability. As we know that if a person is having multiple uh, disability, then a two score has to be combined together to reach a final score. The formula is A, which is uh, the disability with highest score, plus B into 90 minus A divided by 90. And here, as per the new rules, it clearly says that when a person is having mental illness and mental retardation, this cal the person will comes under multiple disability, but this calculation may not be used. Uh, we are not very sure that why it has mentioned in that way, but as per the rules, when mental illness and mental retardation comes, we don't have to add this both the score, but the person will have multiple disability and we will put the score of highest disability as a disability, final disability score. So there is no explanation for that because that's what the uh, current rules uh, says. Then, as we mentioned, there are other scale to assess disability, which include uh, the uh, Buddha's or grounding in activity restriction scale or uh, uh, global uh, assessment of functionality or different scales to assess uh, disability. But uh, in Indian settings, as per the rules and regulations, we generally uh, instructed to use IDEA scale, but Buddha's or grounding in activity restriction scale can be utilized to assess the disability in a much more elaborative way when you're working with actively with uh, patients. So as a conclusion, it's already nine o'clock. The approach of disability or looking at disability has changed over a period of time. There is a collaborative effort between individual and various systems uh, in society to improve the conditions of people with disabilities. Uh, as a uh, PSW, as we know that uh, we are not part of any medical board or any uh, assessment uh, team um, in terms of disability, but at the same time, we can be a facilitator, we can, we can uh, provide information and uh, support, we can advocate for persons and families for various welfare benefits, and we can provide education to ensure the rights of persons with uh, disabilities.